he, he gave this to me. He's That's like, you can crazy. have this. I'm like, I love you. But you were right there. You were in the pocket of World and Cliver, and so yeah, that that worked. That helped. <laughs> what? What the? F <laughs> <laughs> what? Tony Hall. Are you looking for a delicious and nutritious snack that packs a real protein punch? Each one ounce serving of wonderful pistachios contains six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value. Pistachios are known for their protein power fiber, and better for you, unsaturated fats. For a combination that may help keep you feeling fuller longer. It's one of the highest protein nuts out there. I got the call that Wonderful Pistachios was a sponsor. Yeah. When I literally was coming back from the grocery store, had it in the grocery bag. You bought it. I, I buy them. The uh, best part, Wonderful Pistachios come in a variety of flavors and sizes, perfect for enjoying with your family and friends or taking them with you on the go during your summer adventures. Check out wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more about how these little green wonders can power up your day. Hey. Someone just added Punch Tony. Don't Did they? Hey, everybody. Hulk vs. Wolf cooking show segment with Clyde Singleton. He's Cook here. Clyde. We're going to talk about stuff, but first we're going to learn how to make uh, awesome breakfasts. What is it? What are we uh, what are Camel we City Cigars. Ooh, we're Ooh. making Camel City Cigars. Man, that sounds so <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's French toast, but that sounds <laughs> way better. Oh. Let's do this. We're going to make got Camel City Cigars. Oh, I got <laughs> Wow, man. You got some Hershey squirts on your lips. That's not a good look. Yeah, you don't want that. Thanks, Tony. That's, that's, that's a friend right there. You should have left it there. All right, first we're going to smash the bread. This is really Why are you easy. smashing it? Why are we smashing? Because we're making them smash French Do you want me to smash it? I'm good at smashing It's going to be stuff. great. We usually do it with a rolling pan. <laughs> Why are you smashing it, though? Because we're going to make, we're going to, we're going to put some stuff inside What are we of making? It. I'm going to let you roll one of these up, OK? I, I'm good at You seem like a good up. roller. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. Walk through that so one. now, let's put this here so we can see shit. Let's see shit. Get Nutella. Mm. Put it on the inside. What are you going to Nutella and Hershey syrup? You can do, I usually do strawberry cream cheese, but we're doing Nutella. Ooh. It's a Nutella type of day. Can you get strawberry cream cheese like in a cup? Thing you can, yeah. You can, you yeah. can also make it with a twenty dollar blender. I don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah, we do. you got plenty of time. You put make... effort into it. This <laughs> seems like something I could actually do. Dude, you could do this. You could do this. This is like I could live off this because yeah. I just got. I, the I can already you tell take... my daughter is. So you all take time. these, you roll guys, that. Yeah, I can do that. that. Yeah. You want to roll that one? Come on. Oh yeah. Roll it up like that. Roll it nice and tight. You're gonna make a little cigar. You want to roll one, Tony? Want to roll that? Yes, one? but I don't have the experience he does. Okay, you're gonna roll. There we go. Look at that. These guys are making me breakfast. This is what's up. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's ready to go. That's, that's decent. We'll fix that one up. Uh, Tony did good. I did okay. Yeah, you did. It, it'll be good. So look, how about this? We can fix yours. This one might need I a I did work. bad. You are terrible. How is that possible? I would never let you roll for me. I don't <laughs> roll doobies <laughs> out of bread. You are, you are fired. <laughs> I've never, I've never been well, Maybe it's time you to start. You are on dish pit. This is, this is Jason's. <laughs> this Sorry. is, okay. We're going to make these. So there we go. We got three of them rolled, right? Take your eggs. We'll pick some up as they go. Son of a bitch, Clyde. I feel like I could make this. You could make this, dude. I'm going to make this for my kids. You're going like, to look nah. like a champion when you make this yeah. for your kids, dude. Three. So you do... One egg for each? Yeah, you basically. can do one egg for each. Yeah, it's basically French toast. It's like the same That's thing. The ratio. French toast. Yeah, same thing. Take a little almond milk. That was a great cooking question, Tony. Thank you. That was a great, yeah. We're okay. learning. Why almond milk? You're doing great for a dish. Because guy. dairy is lame. <laughs> That's why. It's, milk, it's cow cheese. Okay. There's that cow. Where's vanilla? Are eggs dairy? A little cinnamon. They are. A little cinnamon. Are dairy. They are dairy, yeah. yes, sir. 
So you said vanilla dairy plain. But you're little, looking at three eggs right there. A little vanilla extract. Oh, yeah. It can be considered poultry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's meat. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah. refer to him. Yeah. Meat. It's meat. A little vanilla extract. Not too much, though. Not too much. You can get A couple drunk. of drops. You can get drunk off that stuff. Um, I don't nutmeg? Need to know that. No? I don't think we need it. Mix this up. So far, I reckon I could do yeah, it. Yeah, you could do this so far. Mix yeah. this up. All right? Yeah. Put a little sugar in there. A little brown sugar. Little Sugar's powder. always fun. Brown sugar. Did you know if you have the hiccups, you put some sugar on your tongue and it doesn't do shit? <laughs> I had the hiccups all day. I used to grab any any remedy and just yeah. that doesn't work either. So hey. you got if these. You buy it a shoe, yeah. that won't work. Upside down drinking water, no. Yeah, but that's that's fun right? to try. We got Is this it? one. Yeah, I mean, it's I wasn't... ridiculous. When I was a kid, I was like, oh, I'm gonna try that. Okay, well, maybe that I need way. To... I all right, you roll the bread doobie you in the, the egg. There. Yours is a little broken, but we can make it work. Mine is? It's a little broken. Because that's okay. what I need to see what mine would do anyway, because that's what it's gonna look like. Tony's looks, Tony's <laughs> looks better than yours. Yeah, I've heard that before. That's... Let's talk about hair. You do not have to choose between better hair growth and your health. There's a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness. Get ahead of thinning hair with Nutrafol's whole body approach to hair growth. No drugs, no compromises. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement, clinically shown to improve your hair growth thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol's hair growth nutraceuticals go beyond genetics to multi-target the root cause of thinning, including stress, hormones, nutrition, metabolism, aging, and lifestyle through whole body health. Physician formulated using natural medical grade ingredients, Nutrafol's drug-free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health. Uh, got that. Good job, Ron Tony. Burgundy, what? In a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. Nutrafol is also trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com, entering the promo code HAWKWOLF to save $10 off your first month subscription. This offer is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $10 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code HAWKWOLF. Butter. 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 That's not real. Butter. It's not. Parquet. But it's just as good. Get that on there. Yeah, you got I'm it. cooking for you right now. That's, That's awesome. insane, all right? That's dope. That is insane. That's a little hot, though. Never cook it on full blast. I thought when you when you offered to cook that you were gonna make something and bring it. I had no idea that we were gonna set up all those. So. I was gonna make uh, Thanks to you guys. I was gonna do black eyed peas. I was gonna do black eyed peas salad and give it to you and call it uh what was we, what were we gonna call it? Like uh hawk eye pea salad. Yeah. We're gonna put you in with the black people, you'd be I great there. Alright, so these guys. Take this guy and put it on there like that. You can put a sausage in there and roll it up. You can put anything you want to in there. There's your poorly damaged one. That <laughs> oh, one looks that? good. What are you talking about? It's, it's going to look good when it's done. It's going to be, thank you. Thank you. While that's cooking, you can do the fun part. So this guy, we're going to make a pretty little something on the plate. <laughs> Bam. Chocolate and caramel. Yes, sir. Just uh, all over the yeah. plate. Yeah. I can do that. You take this up. You take this and you do shit like this. Hey. Ah! It's odd. Ah, How often so are you cooking? Uh, I cook every day, probably too much. <laughs> These guys. For, for others? Yes, I cook in a restaurant in Orlando. I do not want to know the name of it because I don't want people to come and see me. I'm oh. kidding. It's called Stardust. It's a great place. It's, oh, a, like, it's like a little coffee shop slash library. Is it anything like the Stardust in New York? I don't know. Is it, it's, a, it's, like a, it's like a library, bar, coffee shop. It's, no, no, it's not like that. Yeah, it's a bunch of stuff. It's an inspirational learning spot. There's, an, there's like an iconic Stardust so, coffee shop in New York City. Let's turn that on. I was thinking that, uh, we should put uh, a ramp in the studio, like quarter pipes against the walls, yeah. so that you can skate ar through the show. It's just, just like cameos? Like every now and then you're like, uh, hang on a minute. Like we could, ask, we could ask Sheckler to stay. Yeah. Just to skate through the yeah, you could be like in the, the middle of the interview, place. like he needed a pee. It's like go take a pee and then 
jump the gap. Mm. All right. Clyde could do it. No. <laughs> you know, skating? You could do the gap. I do skate. Yeah. I'm not skating through here. Skate what so what am That's I, what I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. If we had, a, if we had, check it out. Quarter pipe here, quarter pipe here, and quarter, matching on the other side. So you could drop in and jump the gap and then come through the chairs. Did you see what happened when I skated through the airport? <laughs> Did you get harassed? Dude, no. <laughs> yeah, by the ground. <laughs> Nobody tackled you. You fell by yourself. I tackled the ground. I t but I told him yeah. he's starting to ruin it for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got... It was bad. He's making a scene. Oh. Now, like, now we're all getting in trouble. Right. Clyde's making a scene. You're the and bad you're, guy? And you're marked by the TSA, dude. Yeah, you know, I got harassed got for harassed. skateboarding in the airport, and I didn't... Just I had it in my hand. You harassable. Yeah, 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 point. yeah, that's true. Did, did anyone? I got it coming for did, sure. Did people see yours though? <laughs> yeah, they saw me. It was like a hundred people. <laughs> and someone asked me my name. I told them it's Stevie Williams. <laughs> <laughs> so they, I think Stevie Williams fault. Well. It's a great thing. Yeah, 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 it is. It's great being black sometimes. <laughs> they mix us up. Like, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. So look, we can take Tony's and we can cut this end off. Why are you cutting the end off? Because it's going to look presentable. You're trying to make it neat. We're going to make it neat. All right, all right I'll give that to the dogs. You, yeah, you give it to the dogs. Is there a dog here? You no. Know, I you know how I feel about dogs. That's all I live with. He has, he has several. Oh, you do? I have five dogs. Five. And a dragon. I don't know five dogs. Yeah. <laughs> You're not friends with five You're dogs? Five. No. Wait, you I'm don't not. bro down with dogs? No, I, I no. No. Why? You don't know. Are you a cat guy? Yeah, I can't think Yes. Of. You like cats. I love cats. I love cats too. I love cats. I just got divorced, so she took the cat, but I'm thinking about getting a new cat. You should get back with her and get the cat. I don't think no. that's a good idea. But I think having a cat might be <laughs> a better move. They look pretty good. I know, these are gonna be great. They I look don't... like gourmet French toast sticks. Remember French toast sticks at Carl's Jr.? Yes. Dude, those are pretty Dude, good. Do you, with the dipping right. sauce. Do you remember the, uh, the cinnamon rolls? Do you, you remember the cinnamon rolls at Hardee's? My mom would go get the cinnamon rolls at Hardee's and I thought she was like like the richest person in the world. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, oh my gosh, she got the cinnamon rolls. And I grew up and I was like, things like a dollar fifty. Yeah. Yeah, but they were delicious. They were delicious, yes. Yeah, they were exactly. really, really delicious. You don't know this because you lived oh, in New Guinea Oh, Guinea's go Florida. Yeah, yeah, let's bash him. I got, I've, I'm aware of sugar. Hungry Jacks. <laughs> Hungry Jack sucks, and so does Burger King. Fast food sucks. Burger King sucks? Yeah, yeah. It's Burger King makes Hungry the Jack's greatest chicken Burger King in Australia. Don't be oh, fooled. really? Don't be yeah. fooled by the government pill. Hey, did you know there's more kangaroos in Australia than people in uh, Uruguay? So if there was a small war in Uruguay, and you took kangaroos there, the kangaroos would win. How high were you when you came up with that? Hey, look, dude, I know this. I know information. That's I'm such a, a rant, but that's such a... I look, dude. We're you're making content. content. This you're is content, you're dude. Trying to find. Okay. Content. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. We should have a kangaroo on the show. By the way, don't flip these with your fingers. As a guest. That's why I don't feel my fingers. What? Yeah. That, don't I, flip I, these I with your fingers. Oh. You've been, you've been yeah, turning okay. those for a while. It's it's okay. Barehanded. It's it's okay. What is it? I don't know if you know. I've, I've fell on my hands a lot skating, so I don't have no feelings. Yeah. Wait, you're saying perfect to be a chef. Did you get that, like, I cut myself like gravel? Like, and then, you know when you get that and you fall again and the gravel goes into the other already yeah. scraped ones? Or you yeah. pick up a hot pan after you fall on the gravel and it burns into the thing. <laughs> yes. That's a great feeling. But <laughs> very Indiana Jones. Yeah. That's very Andy Roy. Would you recommend yeah. preparing these if you had a date? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Good. For dinner? There you go. And you can yeah. put whatever in them. You can literally put whatever in them. But Could I chop it up and make it all look like hors d'oeuvres? Like they look like like Put a little, little uh, stick in it, little Vienna sausage, but little French Vienna yeah, sausage. Yeah, little French. Sausage. Yeah, yeah, and have some dipping sauce. You got it. Would you like to enjoy some of my freshly made? You know what I mean? I'll be That's, doing that. Wait until you put it on a plate. It looks awesome. Right. I can't wait. All right. I think they're ready. How do you feel about this, Mr. Hall? Yeah, I'll eat it. All right. I'm ready. Uh, you yeah. will eat anything. A little bit. Don't like it. Hey, look. Not no, as not bad as him. Yeah, he's saying he's he saying eats that's my okay. tarantulas. So here we go. Oh here we go. You ready? Yeah. So. Finger it. One. Yeah. Ooh, that's a, like seeped Two. into it. Ooh. Tray. Man, you love taking photos of food. <laughs> look at this guy opponent. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's so pumped. Right, so now we're gonna make it look pretty. Hold on. We're gonna make it look pretty. Right. That's a sick phone camera. Thank you. <laughs> That is a sick camera cover. That was one of the greatest yeah, faces. Can you open that for me? Thank you. I got a little grease on my hands right now, all right? And it looks like you're helping. Yeah. 
You got any awesome. mayonnaise jars you yep. need help with? <laughs> so, we're going to make this pretty. Just Powdered like sugar. That. Powdered Ooh. sugar, right? Yes. There used to be something different back Powdered in the day, sugar. am I right? Take a little cinnamon. Yeah. <laughs> I feel we'll like I've been standing next to you before. <laughs> he was sprinkling something a little, a little different. A little, little sprinkle, sprinkle. Take a little of this, put it on the top. Yeah, that stuff's good. I already tasted it. Make, make sure it pretty, make no it nice. In it. You yep. gotta make it nice or make it twice. More caramel. Oh my God. Yes. It's on? It's on. Going in. Go ahead. What's that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. that was kind of barbaric, dude. Yeah, that's great. He's a barb. Yep. I did it. Yep, thank you. I did it. I did it. I made fucking breakfast for Tony Hawk. My life is over. We're done. And Jason. We're done. <laughs> and Jason. Talk Wait, about barbaric. Well, thank you for using a fork. Look at it. I was way more refined with my bare hands. You don't have to use that much uh, chocolate, but he doesn't care what I'm talking about now. It's good, right? Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> Let's go into the studio and talk. Let's do it. All right. Quick break to talk about habits. This must be about our favorite sponsor, Fume. It is. Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. Instead of pods filled with potential harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. Fume's new version two model is snappy and tactile. With an adjustable airflow dial and a magnetic end cap, your fingers will always have something to do. I didn't expect much from Fume, but the minty sensation is really powerful and it really hits back on the throat, yeah? The easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one and Fume is designed to perfectly do just that. They have thousands of five-star reviews from people just like you who've successfully switched when other solutions just didn't work. Head to tryfume.com and use the promo code HVW for 10% off. That's T-R-Y-F-U-M.com and use code HVW to save an additional 10% off on your order today. My brother was the editor of Surfer and Doug Palladini was the publisher. Doug Palladini said, hey, we want to bring back Skateboarder Magazine for an issue. And will you work on it with us? So I worked on it with my brother okay. and with Sean Mortimer. And we put together that one issue. It had Bam on the cover, dropping in off the um, that sculpture. Okay, okay. So I think it was... 90, it was like 95, 96. I lived in LA at the time. Oh, that was, oh, that was before I moved to LA then. I'm so, thinking about the second but, time. But then, then we did that and, it, and it, it was well received. And they're like, oh, we want you guys to do it again. We're like, okay, we'll do it again. <laughs> but it felt like the second time there's too much expectation on it. And it just didn't have the same pizzazz. But then not long after that, they brought back Skateboarder Magazine. Okay, that's parts. when I worked for them. When they, it was like yeah, so I was 90s. I only did those two issues that were like the, okay. the comeback issues kind of. You remember that? That was around yeah. the time of Bam Road for Nike when Nike came out yeah. the first time. Yeah. Remember that? Like, With the was, ads for the worst shoes ever. Dude, okay. You know what's crazy about that? You remember the dude Choppy? Yeah. All right. Oski is the new Choppy. 1,000%. <laughs> he is, dude. It's like they found that dude again and they're like, dude. Let's just knock it. It's it's like the part guy with the long hair that can just he's super flowy. Yeah. Like every time I watch that guy, I'm like, he reminds me of someone. I'm like, it's fucking choppy. They literally like took they took Nike and just flipped it back around. <laughs> yeah. They're like, take that ugly shoe out and put that guy in there. I wonder if there's it. anyone that is at Nike that's been there since Choppy. Well, Chet you was I mean? until recently. Chet Children's oh, I'm talking was. about someone behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Where they could see that parallel. Because that's really funny. I remember well, seeing the... He was from Portland, right? Yes. I think Choppy Remy... Omega. I think Remy Stratton was team manager then. Yeah. yeah. Which is very strange. <laughs> Remy, <laughs> as a team manager, that just... Nike? Like... I didn't see that coming, that's for sure. <laughs> Bam, Bam, Choppy, and, and What Remy. was the deal with the Nike shoe that first came out that was a skateboard shoe that somehow... The Zoom? Managed to be a shoe where I was like, I would never wear that, let alone skate in it. How did they... They already have several shoes that are awesome, and then they made a skate shoe that sucked. And I was like, why don't you just give us an Air Force One, you dickheads? You know, like, what is this 
that new was, that design. Was, that was before they knew people liked Air Force. Right, because then people started designing yeah. for them. They were them, like, right? oh, you guys like that ugly shoe? Hold on. Yeah. They were like, they started putting a bunch of designs on it. That's it was the like you guys already business. had the shoe, and then you made a new pile of shit for Dude, the SB is <laughs> the SB is like the Taco Bell of shoes. Yeah. They, it literally is a Taco Bell of shoes. They will take that shoe and flip it over and over and over. They're like, no, it's not a burrito. It's a melted burrito. Yeah, and yeah. people are like, yeah. It, it, <laughs> I mean, like, it is like, a melted I mean, burrito. It is. That's like, such like, a good name. They literally take the same thing and flip it over and over, and people are like, dude, that's De La Soul. And it's like, that's the same fucking shoe. <laughs> Everyone, yeah. Clyde Singleton's here. Oh, uh, yeah. How you so doing? So excited to have you here. Thanks, Thank Clyde. You. Thank you for having me. Um, I mean, such a fixture in the skate industry and legend. And I mean, you were there beginning of the world days. Were you living with Nautis? Yes, for a bit. I was living, yes, I was. How I mean, was that? That's a claim to fame. That was insane, and th that Were you was. You driving uh, around the NSX? No, but um, in those days, I, it was it was just kind of surreal because for a while before that, I was actually pro for Acme, and I'm sure you guys all know Jim Gray, and it didn't really work out. So I thought I kind of deserved a little more. Well, he was making a lot of he was making a lot of products, and I was making no money. I was like buying pants and shit from him, but I was pro. Wow. So I ended up going back. To, uh, I ended up going to Munster, meeting Kareem. And Rodney calls me, asked me to come to California. So I wasn't pro for like a year. And then one day- but You not, were living in Florida. I was, no, I, I came back out here and like Rodney flew me out. But you said you, you came back- Yeah, I came back from Florida. Like right. I went back to Florida because I wasn't pro anymore. Like I was- I see. I was yeah. like, I went, I was pro and then went amateur. And then Rodney calls me out and uh, a year later, after a year of skating and logging footage, Nottis calls me at uh, Deirdre's house. And he's like, you want to ride for 101? And, I was, we were wasted. Yeah, dude, I was wa like wasted on the phone. Did, did what, 101 already existed? Or 101 already existed. Starting. And okay. so at the time I was staying with Kareem and a bunch of other people. And, and I didn't really have a home, but Kareem was like, just stick with me and I got you. So him and, him and Deirdre would shuffle me back and forth. And in that time, I just kept filming and kept skating. Like I just, I didn't know what was going to happen. And one day Nottis calls me at, at Deirdrex and, um, and I was so drunk, I'm on the phone. And I'm like, this isn't fucking Nottis. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like, literally, I'm like, this isn't Nottis Coppice. And he's like, and like, he's like, huh, this is Nottis. I'm like, if this is Nottis, meet me tomorrow at Pacific Drive. <laughs> 10, I was like, 10 o'clock in the morning. What are you going to fight him or Yeah, something? dude, like, literally, I didn't think it was him. I thought it was somebody messing with me. And so the next like in morning. In San Diego. In San Diego. So this is on Promontory. No, not Promontory. It's a place with Deirdick and Petrie and all those guys. So the next morning. Yeah, but Nottis lives up in LA. Yeah, Nottis lives in LA. So I told him to meet me at Pacific <laughs> Drive. This is a true story. He did. So, yeah. so the next morning, Deirdick wakes me up. I guess he called Deirdick. Deirdick wakes me up at 9 30. He's like, hey, dude, we got to go meet Nottis. And I'm like, get out of here. So we, he parks the, the Burger King. You know the Burger King across the street from Pacific Drive? Yes. He parks the Burger King, right? And I'm like, this guy's fucking with me. And I was super hungover. I walk around the corner and it's Nottis, Gino, and Dill. And I was like, holy shit, it's fucking game time. Like, yeah. I had no idea what to think, dude. Like, I didn't, it's Nottis. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was just like, first off, I cussed him out on the phone. Yeah. And, then, and then I'm like, he's here in the morning. And so we go skate and I did two tricks. And he's like, you're on. Did you say sorry to him? After he told me I was on the team. Right. <laughs> right. Nice. I, yeah. Yeah. I had to make sure we were That's cool. Smart. Yeah, what yeah, were the yeah. um, I did a fakie flip over the chain at uh, that Sarah Rosa school. You know, the chain with three steps. Oh, yeah. Sal skated back yeah. in the day. I did yeah. a fakie flip over that. And um, by the love of God, I did a fakie hard flip over a bench. Never tried until that day. And right when I did a fakie hard flip, he's like, he's like, you're on. I have a check tomorrow. It was the first check I ever got pro skater. Wow. I was so stoked, dude. I literally started crying. How, how I'm not even joking. Amazing. It was the first check, I, and I got it from Nottis Coppins. How, how much? <laughs> I think it was uh, it was like 500 bucks. Yeah. But to me, it was like five million. Bucks. I get that, dude. It, 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 on the like, yeah. but this is the best part about it. So I get the check from Nottis, right? And um, and I go up to World. I think it was like I had to go up to World like the next day or two, and I meet everyone. Rodney's like, you know, Rodney, everyone's there. And I'm just like, dude, this is so surreal. You know, like I grew yeah. up watching all these guys. And yeah. At this point though, do you think you're just visiting California again or you are already living? I here? mean, he said I was on one-on-one, -on -one, but I didn't know what that entailed. You know, right. I'm just like, sweet. I'm on Nottis' team, like with all these great guys. And I'm, Costin. I, 
Yeah, but I had a bunch of footage already. So I was like ready to go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't really have to film for 20 shot. Like, I had a bunch of footage just sitting around. And he and, knew that, right? And he knew that. Right. Like, I didn't know that he saw the footage. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I didn't know this. And so he somehow found me at Deirdrex. And from there, my entire life turned around. Yeah. When yeah, you did, really. when that video came out, were you from there on out like, that's it, I'm filming parts, I'm on a mission? Or what was your your look on the future? I didn't really have a plan. I just kept skating. <laughs> you like, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't know. You know, I, I was feel like, like that's why you and I were friends. When yeah. it was like, you're a street dude, I'm a bird yeah. dude, but <laughs> late at night, we were cool. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, dude, I get to I've go. I've heard to that all... story a few times here. Yeah, I was like, I was like, we get to go to all the cool parties. That's all I knew. I was yeah. like, all I got to do is skate. We get to go to all these awesome. And you parties. became a pretty big fixture of Big Brother too. Yeah, those guys all took me in. Like, you know, they all, everyone just kind of took me in. Like, it was surreal to me. I was watching these guys at home one day. Yep. And then the next thing I know, I'm like on tour with these guys. I'm sleeping in Nadis's house. He's waking <laughs> me up, giving me coffee. Yeah. In the same house, he skates and like speak, you know, I mean, streets of fire. I get it more than anybody, dude. I, same thing. I like, literally tried I, to go out front and do, you know, when he skates and uh, he skates up and he does a tail drop, the tail slide? Yeah. I ate shit in front of Nas's house. I tried that in front <laughs> tried of his, his trick. I tried his trick and just piled out. It was like, you know what? I'm just gonna sleep here. So I hung out with him and um and you know back to him. Um, at the time he was working with the Alcoholics. He was doing their yeah. He did the album cover for the Alcoholics. Oh, wow. His name's in the his name's in the in the thing. Yeah. And I remember the guy pulling up in like some hoopty, and I was like, why is this random black dude at at Nas's house? And it's Tash from the Alcoholics. And I was like. Dude, I'm like all of like 19. This is my entire life. I was like, dude, this is insane. Yeah. Like I had no idea what was going on around me. I was just going with the flow. Yeah. You know, I was one day I'm like in Jacksonville eating church's chicken. Next day I'm hanging out at Nazis. Would have brought a lot of energy to your existence though, all that yes. happening. Like yeah. It was it was um, you know, you're skating around the best dudes. So yeah. you know, you start uh you start honing off. your skill a little more. Yeah. You know, and um it's cool to be like all the guys skate with guy and like those guys, you know, I skate with yeah. like some of the best guys and you can't, you know, it's weird. Like you're like, I can't suck guy Mariano's yeah. here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and like everyone was kind of feeding off each other, you know, it was, it was a very special time. It was yeah. a very, very special time for skateboarding. Yeah, and I mean, for that, me. those were, those were revolutionary times in skating. Absolutely. And when it was still, I mean, yes, you're living the dream and all that, yeah. but it was, it, but in the grand scheme of things, it was still so underground. Yes. I mean, if you're thinking about the beginning of, of 101. Yeah, and, I mean. And blind and everything is just like, I mean, that's when we started Birdhouse and Plan B. And we're all just like, is this even going to work? Yeah. <laughs> is there people, will people buy skateboards still? It was weird. It was like, I was talking to Chris Markovich about this recently. And it was, yeah. we had all of these companies like under. Tea bags. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> I was sponsored by His I mom, his Dude, we were in an dude, ad I together. Dude, I lived at his house with his mom. I... We were in an ad together. Dude, you guys were in a tea bag ad together. Yeah, we were in a tea bag ad together. As a matter That's of amazing. fact, hold this, hold that. As a matter of fact, <laughs> the not a story I just told you with the fakey flip over the chain. It was in the ad where we're in the ad together. Dude, yes, yes. Tea bag ad. Tea bags. His mom made the his mom made the boxers and stuff. Dude, those like Magovich let me live at his house. His mom was like made me breakfast. Like I was just like his brother basically. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was always like that. I felt like there were similarities there where everyone just took care of me, man. Like, yeah. I was always always had food. I always had, you know, and there was times there where I didn't have any money. But I had, I never was like, oh, I haven't eaten for two. Like, I never, I never said that. I I've never went without, some... you know, it was like, it was a very pure time in skating back then. It was, um, it was, everyone took care of everyone. Yeah. You know, it was, and it was, it's kind of unselfish. You, you know, don't like, think they do now? Huh. Really? I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know kids now. I don't yeah. know how they, you know, I, I know. No, I mean the older, but pros. it's also, it's just not, it, it's so, it's so widespread now. Yeah. You, you're not going to go to some place and, and find the only skaters in town. Uh, yes. The way that it was back then where you were at the, you were at the center of a yes, but there was no other scene. There was no, there was no other scene. And like, and it was, it was a lot of like, I was telling someone this the other day. Like, say, like, you remember the contest back in 93, 94? You know, like, say, like, Brick House, like, Brick in New Jersey, you know, that kind of stuff. You would go to these contests, man, and, like, everyone was cheering for everyone. 
Like everyone was and like everyone was there. Everyone was there. No one left the vert. No one didn't show up to the vert contest Sunday. You know what yeah. I mean? And all the guys from the vert contest showed up Saturday. It was yeah. like a thing. I'm pretty sure Willie was in the vert contest right. <laughs> yeah. at the Bricktown. <laughs> Uh, at that event, dude, it's and it was like sick. I back have then. like I have a, a seared memory of Willie doing alley oop calarial on that ramp in the contest. That's so crazy, man! Like it was, <laughs> I mean, it was just it was such a pure time in skating, like the Houston contest and stuff. You yeah. know, like everyone's cheering and running around. It was, it just felt like a lot. I can't explain it. You know, you kind of have to be there. It was everyone was cheering for. There was enough room for guys like even yourself. And then say a Simon Woodstock would come out and people were like, dude, Simon Woodstock. Yeah. Everyone liked everyone. You yeah. know, it was like there was no like, look at his shorts. You know, it was everyone was really cool with everyone. And oh, that I was, was doing that. I think you. that's kind of missing. You know, you know what you know what it was though? I think it was that it was really innocent and then everyone else kind of knew their place from like the fans to the team managers. Like everyone kind of played their role. Now everyone is every fucking thing. So yeah, that's what yeah, that's, that's what the huge difference is. You know, it was yeah. like the contests were a lot more respectable. People weren't running up on you like, take a picture of me and my ugly kid. You know, like, it wasn't like a lot of that weird <laughs> shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> kind of saying ugly kids. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's some like little like Mr. Burn shaped kid. You're like, come on, <laughs> <man."> <laughs> See the laugh. I have to tell you the story. It's, it's ridiculous and it's a non sequitur, but um, we were on tour with uh, Dimitri. Okay. Um, in on an audio shoes tour in Australia, I think it was like ninety eight, ninety nine, with Dmitry Alyaskovich, who became the main camera dude for Jackass, but yes. was the Big Brother photographer. Yes. So, this is so weird. He had a digital recorder. No one had any digital devices back then, but he had a digital recorder, and he just had like all his favorite sounds on it, <laughs> and he would just play them because it was funny. And one of them was just Clyde laughing. Right. <laughs> that. And I'm like, what is that? That's He's so like, sick. It's Clyde laughing. That's so sick. <laughs> and then like random voicemails. Dude. And he would just play them in the car for us. And we were laughing endlessly. Dude, I have a crazy <laughs> Dimitri story. We were on a, it was like, like back then they had, they had all the companies under one house. So imagine a tour where it was like world blind, plan B, I'm sorry, world blind, plan, plan B, 101, menace. Five or six companies with like five or six guys. So there'd be three vans of just hooligans rolling from town to town. Yeah. You know, and all these kids come out, but it was like a whole thing. But one night we were in, I believe it was Cincinnati, and we got kicked out of some town. So we went to some crack hotel or some shit, obviously, because this is where the story's going. So next morning it was myself, LeVar McBride. You remember LeVar, yeah. right? This is LeVar who couldn't do anything. He's like 15. Me, LeVar, his brother, a bunch of other people, they had a joining room. And Dimitri comes running in and he's like, all right, everyone, get up. We have to go. And he jumps on the bed. And LeVar sits up on the bed as he jumps up. And right as LeVar sits up, there was a painting on the wall. And a and a needle came and stuck into the, into the pill. I swear, I remember the like story. Like hyperdermic. Like, yes. So, like, there was a, yeah, and it was on the top of a thing. <laughs> and oh and Dimitri, ju- Dimitri came and jumped on the bed. And the second that LeVar, like, lifted his head up, you saw this thing behind him go. And we were like, all right, dude, we're out. Well, it was sticking out of his back. No, it was sticking out of the pillow. Like he got it, he picked his oh, head up. Oh, I thought up. you said it went into his no, back. No, it was he's picked his head up. Oh, and, like, and when he picked okay. his head up, I guess from Dimitri jumping on the bed again, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. He, when he when he stood up, okay. it was like I the thing you're fell tell off. us that LeVar's yeah. had health no, problems. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, that LeVar's LeVar's okay. I think he was just would have uh, been a better story, but he yeah. was yeah, that could have been bad. He was just he smoked a little too much weed when he was young. Right. But he's okay. <laughs> I remember I dropped a skateboard on Tony Magnuson's head and when he owned Planet Earth and I was on Planet Earth and I was messing with somebody in the hotel and it was the second story and I was like I'm gonna I think it was Todd what's the Todd remember the guy that could do crazy lip, lip tricks vert dude Todd Conchalier, Conchalier? Todd Conchalier yeah. yes so I had his Conch. setup, and I was like I'll throw it out the out of, off the balcony and he was like you will not and I was like, oh, yeah. And I put my hands over the rail and let go of it. And as I let go of it, Tony Magnuson <laughs> walks God. from under the balcony out to where the skateboard's falling. <laughs> and someone goes, Dude. look out. Oh, and no, he, so he looks up at and it. And he looks oh, up at it God. as the grip tape hits him on the forehead. And Dude. I was like, I'm off. I'm <laughs> kicked off the tank. 
Like I went down there and I remember thinking, because it was back when I was on planet earth and I really love Chris Miller and Tony Magnuson's got a wax style. And I don't really, I don't really want to hang out with him, but he does own the company. I mean, and I was t- like, I got to go down here and apologize. He's probably going to think I did it on purpose. Like it was a, I didn't get kicked off, but I remember there was a couple of days there where I was in shock that I had done something that stupid. I always thought Tony Mag looked like John Cougar Mellencamp. Yeah. He does, dude. He looks like, he looks a, like a German John Cougar. He looks like a... Right. a, a <laughs> he's Swedish. He's, Swedish, whatever. You know, he's right. like back. Like I saw him at X Games and he's got a whole new skateboard team, H Street. But yeah, I know. Girls, he's got little girls on it, and he runs the team. He's smart. He went to and Japan. he's got like safari stuff on. He looks like he's like on safari. Who's that random black dude he hangs out with? Maybe they could be the new Robin Big. Yeah, there you go. There you go. The Stop. UK Robin. <laughs> dude, I love, I love your uh, your little history lessons that you put out on Instagram. They're thank you. So fun to read. Thank you. Or, or you just see some random clip. You're like, all right, let's run up the facts yeah. on this one. <laughs> it's so great. It's so you know the best part about do I love doing those because um internet trolls are you know they're like mainly little kids but most of the stuff that we grew up on it's kind of smart to post that stuff because it confuses them so it's like you can't talk shit to me because you don't know what you're looking at yeah. you know what I mean yeah. so it X's out all of them kids I'm like you know what this yeah. shuts it off from like everyone 30, 30 up or 30, 30 up that's for you like yeah. the younger guys are just like. Who's Matt Hensley? And it's like, you know what? This just ain't for you. Yeah. Like, you should just go to, like, one of them other things. Yeah. Or so. just talking shit about the gear or the, yeah. the clothes. And, and I mean, then, it's cool. But, to... but you you shut it down right away. Like, all right, here's the deal. Yeah. This is what you're looking at. This is what's happening. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex. Babe. You remember that song? No? Don't do that. Ever again. Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. Yeah, Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers an active ingredient as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablet at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Get it? Yeah, no, it's constantly happening to me. <laughs> the process is simple. It really is. I did it, so that should seal the deal sign up <laughs> at bluechew.com i did and they sent it to me so i yeah. think if i could do yeah. it you could do it yes. bluechew.com consult with one of their licensed medical providers and once you're approved you'll receive your prescription within days the best part it's all done online so no visits to the doctor's office no awkward conversations and no waiting in line at the pharmacy blue Chew's tablets are made in the usa and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package you could be missing out on the best sex of your life. Not me. <laughs> I knew that I'm was missing coming. out at all. They say there's nothing sexier than confidence, <laughs> and Blue Chew can help give you the confidence where it counts. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it, do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code HawkWolf at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code HawkWolf to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we would like to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. This one right now, the one we're talking about, the one that you're going to go back to. It's very important to um, to articulate those things. You know, you see things on like I- IG yeah. and you're just like, it's just a picture. And you're like, dude, yeah. fucking say something. Give some context. <laughs> right. I got a question. What's the worst slam you ever took? Um, on a skateboard? Yep. Or off of a skateboard. Oh, I want to know both. Now. <laughs> I was I was leaving a con a skateboard contest and fell off a bridge in Prague. You what? fell. What do you mean you fell off a bridge? I fell off of a bridge, dude. Where was the water? Like, like a whole bridge into right. water we, or no tube. on the ground? And Rob Welsh fell on top of me. Wait, both of you fell off a bridge. I fell first, and he fell on top of me. How drunk did someone get to fall off a bridge? I don't know. But the, the crazy part is, is it happened the same night that Keenan passed away. So it was at the World oh. Cup, and they said that Keenan passed away. And so everyone was kind of freaking out and left the contest. Let me pull a little context to the story. The day before, I had a concussion at the contest. So I was walking around. Yeah, I was, there's like a huge box with a pyramid. This thing was clearly made for BMX guys. There's like an eight-foot pyramid with a four-foot I four remember those Prague events. That, yeah. yeah, the, yeah, the, the courses like, were something to be desired. And so my dumb ass is like, dude, I'm solid grinding that thing. And, and clipped my heel on it and tried to run backwards off the box and miss the other side of the pyramid and just smacked my head. 
So I woke up in the emergency room. Oh, wow. So Prop that night, out. that night I had a big bandage. I looked like Frankenstein. Yeah. I had a huge bandage in my head. And we went to a casino, won a bunch of money at the contest the next day. Uh-huh. I'm like, everyone drinks on me. <laughs> like, so we got wasted at the contest. And as we got wasted, they came back and said that Keenan passed away. And so everyone's like bummed out. It starts pouring raining. All the smart people got in the little van that takes you back to the Pyramid Hotel. <laughs> Rob and I almost got in a fist fight because that's what teammates do. And for some reason- With we each got, other. Yeah, with each other. Like cool. we would get drunk and want to fight each other. That's all, right? Yeah, this, yeah, he's really tall. He probably would have clobbered me. But we would always like get, in, this is like how we bond. So everyone's like, get in the thing. We're like, no, we're going to fight. And so everyone leaves us. <laughs> yeah, everyone, everyone, just, no, everyone just leaves us. No, we're going to fight. Like, we're going to fight real quick. Yeah. So we decide we're going to walk back to the hotel, which is across- but you we decide were, you're going to fight, then walk back to the yeah, hotel? Yeah, in the rain, in the there. rain, too. Yeah, when like, was the, when yeah, did the fight not happen? We'll get did, to the fight. Yeah, the, the, right. Let's walk we saw, we, we, saw, we saw the bus leave, and, and we're like, oh, shit. Like, so we hugged it out, and we're like, maybe we should leave right yeah, now. Yeah, so, we yeah. started, <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so we start walking back to the hotel, and there's a bridge that goes across the canal there. You know yeah, the canal? And, um, and I see the hotel, and I guess the bridge had like a railing about this high. And I was drunk, and I... I think I maybe tried to, I was like, oh, there's a hotel and fell over the rail. And clearly I might, I must've grabbed Rob too, because he fell on top of me. And I cracked my head from here to my ear. I woke up in ICU like three Wait, days. Wait, so second, second concussion. two days yes. later. Yes. The, the next day. I woke up in ICU like, day. I woke up in ICU two days later and Joey Pepper was holding my hand and I was like pissed. Dude. He was, I was like, dude, what the fuck? Like, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And so... And the doctor, the same doctor that put the bandages on my oh, head. Oh, no. Yes, the same doctor was like. He's like, this guy. He's like, you are the luckiest person I've ever seen. Yeah. Like, and my head was completely split. By this time, Rob Welsh lived, obviously. He went back to the hotel, and everyone's mourning over Keenan, right? And so Rob comes in wasted and bloody, and he's like, hey, Clyde's dead too. So everyone leaves and goes home, and people start calling my mom. Mind you, I'm still out in ICU. Oh. My mom thinks I'm dead. So, <laughs> so I wake up. I'm like, dude, I got to call my mom. She's going to fucking kill me. Yeah. I call my yeah. mom. I'm like, I'm like, she's like, she's like, boy, I thought you were dead. She's like, pissed. She's like, I was like, no. So I was like, I fell off a bridge in Prague. She's like, I don't even know what no Prague is. Call, talk to your daddy. <laughs> like, she was so mad. She was so mad I was in some place she didn't know. She I was like, know she was like was. pissed I was alive. And then she was pissed she didn't know where I was at alive. <laughs> and so I had to go home and like go through physical so you were therapy. In a coma. Yeah, I was in a coma for a couple of days, man. I'd come home and get like Shh. physical therapy. Like I still have like some remnants of balls palsy. Like I still obviously slow. My speech is a little messed up. But yeah, man, I made it. I'd somehow, cr- and then I flew home. They told me not to fly home. And the pressure from the plane. Oh broke yeah, the, it broke the, it broke a muscle behind my eardrum. So when I landed in um, Washington D.C., my face looked like you ever seen Peter Dude. Griffin? You ever seen Peter Griffin when he like my entire face? I remember trying Dude. to eat. I tried to eat a Whopper and it literally fell out of my mouth. And I was like, I think I might be hurt. So I came back home to L.A. and I started walking to Cedar Sinai. I saw Chris Casey and someone else, and they were looking at me like you're looking at me. They were like, Holy shit, you're alive! And so. I didn't know where I was going. I was walking around, and they took me to uh, Cedar Sinai, right up the road. Oh, it's in LA. it's in Close Hollywood. Enough. Yeah, it's, they took me to Cedar Sinai, and the guy's like, "If you would have went home, I went to a CAT scan. He's like, if you would have went home and went to sleep, you wouldn't have woke up because of the swelling." Yeah, and so I had so to go they- through I had to go through fucking rehab. I had to tape my eyes shut for over a month because I couldn't close my eye and go to sleep. So I had to tape it shut. Oh. I had to learn how to chew again. I had to learn how to blink again. How long did that go for? Uh, the first trial was like a month, and then I had to go for like a total of like three months. Yeah, dude. Wow. I had to tape my eyes shut for like like every time I wanted Did to that, see. I had to tape so your worst shut. your worst skate accident and yes, yeah, that was my worst. Uh, other I, accident I, happened. It's kind of technically skating because I was I yeah. was I was in the skateboard world. So, yeah, yeah if it wasn't for skateboarding, that wouldn't have happened. And if it wasn't for Rob Welsh falling on top of me, I'm. <laughs> You think that was worse? What about the fact that you terrible. pulled him off the bridge because you Dude, fell? He's, he's like six four. He fell on top of me like a blanket. Did that slow you down skating? Like uh, once you healed, were you worried about hitting your head? I was more pissed that I couldn't finish filming for aesthetics video. Yeah. Like I was like, you know, like I really wanted because that wasn't gonna be my last project, but it was, you know, it was something I felt like it was kind of a proving ground because yeah. I hadn't really done anything since the world days. You know, I didn't really have a video part, so I was like, all right. 
you know, we were filming a lot and yeah. I was just like, shit. So um, I was really bummed about that, but I got some tricks. You know, uh, I got some tricks in the air. Did, did it affect your skating further down the road? Kind of like every once in a while, I say it doesn't, but I know it does. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I know I still have like, like every once in a while I hear like, like I hear like that in here. I'm just like, dude, what the f-? Like I always hear like a little uh, yeah. buzzing thing and every once in a while I get like a twitch and I'm like, dude, don't do it. Cause yeah. it'll lock up sometimes. Like I get like balls paws. You just seriously like clamp up on me. Still. Yeah, dude. I fell on my head. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> like, yeah. Twice in one weekend. Yeah. You're really not supposed to do that. Did the they, did they have to alleviate the pressure when you went to Cedars? Is that how they... Um, I'm not... You don't really know. I don't really know, man. It was like, there was a lot going on at that time, and I was partying a lot, too. That that kind of... I remember them telling me not to drink, and I was like, cool. And then, like, two weeks later, I was like, with my eye tape shut, like, sipping wine out of the side of my mouth, I kill I'm like, this is so bad. It was like, it was wow. really bad. Yeah, man. What was that slam? You hit the fence with oh, your that face. Was when, that was when I was staying with Markovich. When I was, yeah, when tea bags days. Are you trying to blame Markovich for that slam? Yes, because he told me to go first. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you we should. gotta play this slam. You yeah, guys like, gotta get it. Like it's... he's like, he's like, he's like, dude, he's like, you should try that. I was like, dude, no problem. You know, I, was like, I can sport side that thing. Not <laughs> thinking the the end of the rail and the fence is like from me to the wall. It's like ten feet. <laughs> So I don't know where I was going to go. And I was just like, <laughs> Markovich asked me to board side and saying, absolutely. Yeah. And so I get to the end and I was like, oh shit, the fence. And I jumped off and the rest is history. Yeah. I literally did like my feet, t- my, my feet touched the back of my head. Scorpion. I did it was a full scorpion. A brutal slam. Yeah, it was. And brutal. I go, oh, my face. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear me. You can hear me. I got my face. Like, <laughs> That's a fair comment. Your yeah. face hit the fence hard. That's about, I mean, I've broken my fingers. Um, I broke my finger once at a NSA contest and Andrew Reynolds' mother was running the contest. It was, yeah. And she was like the one running the contest. And um, I remember getting up off the ramp and being like, oh shit, my finger. And she's like, your thumb? She's like, yeah, it was my thumb and it was oh, sideways. No. And she's like, she's like, put that thing away. And uh, so I went and sat <laughs> down. I went and sat down and like everyone's kind of freaking out. She's like, can I get something for you? And I was like, I remember I was broke that day and I was like. Was it broken or dislocated? It was dislocated. It was literally like an yeah. L. So it still, it pops like pretty bad. But she's like, can I get you anything? And I was broke that day. And I was like, can I get a hot dog and a soda? Like, yeah. <laughs> like I was so psyched I got a free hot dog. And I was like, eating it with my, like, <laughs> yeah, dude, I was so hyped. Almost worth it. Yeah, it, was, it was worth it. I had to, I, they, didn't, they didn't cover the doctor bill. I will say that much. I, they, like whoever, I think it was Fast or NSA, they sent me the doctor bill. And I'm like. You oh, bastards. Wow. I like yeah. you bastards. Yeah. I never yeah. paid it. I never paid it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how'd you get into cooking? Um, I used to cook. Um, like Jason was saying, I mean, when we first came out, we, no one really had money and stuff. So yeah. I would just, that's kind of yeah, what but, started but me. <laughs> we turned to like Top Ramen and... Like that's kind of what started like me. Like, as good I, as I got is I got a sack of potatoes. Exactly. And I knew that if I have a frying pan... I can just I would cut them in little flat ones and make like yep. kind of weird Wedge flat fries. potatoes, yep. potato Wedge chips. Fries. So potatoes. that's all I had. Yes, there was no you had. You were tell, leaning into it. I, no, I would I would get You're potatoes. Very creative. I would get potatoes and then like I started messing with like different herbs and spices. But it literally started with potatoes. But I was um I was a really big nerd growing up. Like I was really super big nerd. So. When I came out, I would always do New York Times cross puzzle, crossword puzzles. Yeah. So when I would get the crossword puzzles, soon enough, I started getting the recipes out of them. And this was around 20. And the first thing I made, I had no idea until I became a chef. One of the first things I literally made made was a roux. I made a cheese roux for like this very good, uh, I made a man, it was a Soho mac and cheese, Soho grand mac and cheese. It's like this extravagant mac and cheese thing. And you make a roux sauce. But I would always be like, dude, I can make this awesome cheese sauce. And a roux is so hard to do right. And I could do it perfectly, but I didn't know I didn't know how to make a mid-rare steak or nothing, but I could make this cheese sauce every time. So from there, it took off. Like, and I yeah. just always cook for my friends. Um, I remember one of the first big things I cooked was for Anthony Van England and some Japanese guys. Anthony's family was on a missionary or something, and he had nowhere to go for Thanksgiving, so I had him and a bunch of Japanese kids over. Yeah. And I remember that was like one of my first big meals. 
and um, what was the traditional Thanksgiving meal or the traditional Thanksgiving? Yeah. And I just had all these sighs, and I was like, man, I can do this, you know. And when I got out of skating, I was like, yeah, I want to go work in the restaurant. And I immediately learned that it is nothing like cooking at your house. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's not so stressful now, but just at the time I got in, it was just, you know. Like, like we were saying with the, you know, with the comedians, man, it's a lot of gatekeeping, a lot of people yeah. forgetting where yeah. they came from, you yeah. know, like, you know, you're in the, I, I appreciate it being in the dish pit and working my way up. I do. And to like, pay your dues. Yeah. Because I didn't want to go in as Clyde Singleton. You know what yeah. I mean? I wanted to go in and, and learn everything and know where everything is and, and what Trying really, to do it the right way. I want to do it the right way. Just yeah. like skating. You yeah. know, I didn't want to like, I didn't want to steamroll it in. And, and so, uh, I was washing dishes for a while and. One day, one of the chefs, like, there was like five chefs on the line, and they had a bunch of oysters, and being from Florida, I was like, dude, like, they couldn't pop the oysters. And I was like, looking at these guys, I'm washing dishes, and I'm like, like, you guys want me to pop some oysters? Like, yeah. They had like a dozen of them. I was like, pop, pop, pop. Did them in like less than a minute. They were yeah. like, you can cook? And I was like, yeah, a little bit. And so they had me doing that thing and setting up. They were like, dude, like, I was like, yeah, I can do plating and stuff too. And so they, I started off doing that, and then slowly made my way up the line and after a couple of years you know became a chef you know I how do they do they ask you like hey man we actually want you to be a chef or did you gradually were you just- i gradually worked my way up and the first guy that gave me a chef job was uh a kid that he was a skater kid and he worked at, he worked for thomas taylor rest in peace he worked for him in in atlanta and he moved to Asheville, and he was just like hey you want to be a sous chef and i was like sure because i was already doing a lot of specials and stuff yeah it's weird, man. Once you figure it out, once when you're the worker, you're doing the chef's work. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. anyone in the kitchen is technically a chef. You know, like they just So you're checking your name your label yeah, change. Labels, but you were la- doing labels, it. words and labels mean a lot in the kitchen. Yeah. But the work ethic is mainly on the workers. The All chef right. is just like a lot of chefs that I work with, they you know, they walk around and yell and they're conductors. They're conductors, yeah. But, you know, they, they do help. You know, I, I think it does help in a lot of ways. Yeah. It really does. It helps you with a lot of different things, you know, like going So when in, you get to the top, you don't cook anymore. I love cooking. I love doing everything myself, man. Right. I don't... You're still in it. I, I am, man. I'm a creative yeah. guy. Do you I like find to time to skate? Yes, when I'm not tired from cooking. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I still find time to skate. And um, not as much, though, but it's not an excuse, but I need these. You know, I need yeah. these, and oh, I'm on my, yeah, yeah, and I'm on my feet yeah. a lot. So. And you're doing your podcast. Yeah, I'm doing my podcast, and you know, what's like, your I, podcast I gotta, called? It's called WCRP on skateboarding, and okay. it's about the history of skateboarding. It's um, you know, I started it. Check this out. Dude. What is WCRP? WCRP is it's uh, it's Clyde's radio podcast. And oh, so okay. I wanted to put it together like it. AM radio. Yeah. And yeah. the logo looks like WKRP. Yeah. So I had this whole thing set up right, and before I went into it. This is great. I always want to tell you this. Before I went into it, I was like, I'm going to do a podcast on the history of black skating. Then I sat down and thought about it for a minute. And I was like, well, that's going to last like a year. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, I'll be out of content in like a year. You know what I mean? I was like, there's only so many of us. So I was like, maybe I should just do the history and add everyone into it. And so that's... Uh, Who was the first black skater you saw that inspired you? Um, Steve Stedham. I knew it. But you know who the first skateboarder I saw was? You. Really? I promise you to God, dude. You're the first guy I ever saw in seventh grade, dude. I'm not joking. The first guy I ever saw these kids were sitting on a, they're sitting on the benches in the gym and we would always like fuck with these kids. Like I had a wave brush. I'd pop these kids in the back of the head. You know, they're like the kids I fuck with. They're like, you know, I I was just like, I I was cool. So, and these kids were like looking at a magazine. I was like, yo, what's that? Like kind of like punking them. And they were showing me, they were looking at a picture of you. And I was like, I was like, oh man, that's sweet. You were doing a crossbone at Del Mar. You had a pink, you had a pink board. Grant shot the photo. I know. I think it was the one from the top. Oh, I remember. Yeah. I remember this like it was yesterday. I was yeah. asking Grant about it on my podcast, and um, and I was like, man, that looks sweet. Like you were doing a crossbow. I was like, man, that looks so <laughs> sweet. Like awesome. I knew nothing about skating. And the next yeah. day, my neighbor had a skateboard, and I was like, I was like, yo, can I ride that? And tic tacked up the street, and from there, it's been on. Did you, you ever ride the first vert? person I ever saw? Oh, wow, thank I you. used to skate vert a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, when I first started, I skated Pads? Kona. Skate a little. Uh, Put a helmet on? Not really. Yeah. My mom didn't have money. So yeah. <laughs> and then I go to Kona and like, I mean, I'll be honest, everything smelled. You know, I didn't like the pads oh, smell. Yeah, rental pads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like I was just yeah. like, I was like, dude, I'm yes. not going home smelling like yeah, that. Yeah, no. No. 
So we would, you know, there was a lot of backyard waiting. ramps when I was growing up. So I grew up skating a lot of that, and I skated a lot of pools in like late eighties, and you know, I could skate vert. Yeah. Not like you guys, but no, I, I was just vert. wondering when you saw the like the first. But I mean, that's, that's skate. the era when you if you started in that era, especially if you saw Stedham, yes. it would be like there wasn't much street skating not at going all. on. Yeah. So you were like, well, I guess we skate ramps. That's what. I mean, doing. I still had a my first my first board was a psycho stick. And it had two different trucks. The back truck was a, a tracker and it had a birdie because people couldn't ollie back then. You know what I mean? Yeah, like street yeah. skating wasn't that developed. So people were still- so you're bashing up curves. Yeah, you were just yeah. bashing yeah. up the curve. You so know what great. I mean? Yeah. I like, love that. Yeah. I always say like skateboarding kind of like, you could tell when skateboarding took off when, when people had to ollie. They're like, oh shit, you got to like, <laughs> you got to get on that thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? You couldn't be like- you know, like all the guys that were awesome in Savannah Slam and stuff, they were just like, you know, like Chris is... Cooks and those guys would probably be like, hold on, we got to ollie up that shit? Yeah. yeah. Like, so that was a kind of defining, that time, 86, was a, it was special for skating. You know, you you learned, you learned so much. You were like, it was a history lesson. You yeah. seen it so much in magazines and you had to drop in the vert ramp. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you couldn't go to the vert ramp and sit around. They'd be like, dude, get up here and drop in. You're yeah. like, Cool. Next thing you know, you're skating vert. You know what I mean? Yes, like yeah. next thing you know, you're flying off a ramp, and you're like, "Damn, I've only been skating six months." You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so it took off really quick, and um, that era was just special, man. It was a very, it was a learning curve. Yeah. If you could stay, if you could stick with it, you was, know what was I'm Kona your spot? Not really. I skated a lot downtown. Um, I couldn't afford Kona. Yeah, I was gonna say you have to pay. The, yeah, you know, I could right? Like, yeah. I, I had a single mom. My mom worked yeah. at Popeyes growing up. You know, and like she. She's a single mom, so I would just skate with my friends and skate ramps and sneak in and out of ramps and stuff, you know. And then when street skating came around, it was like, yeah, yeah, this you is know right. what I mean. It yeah. was like, yeah. it was like letting a bunch of prisoners out. It was like, <laughs> woohoo! It is seriously the greatest thing ever. We were like, we can, we were like, we can skate there too. And, yeah. and the beauty of back then, it was like, that's such a great analogy. Yeah, dude, it was like, it was like the beauty of back then is like. You had your crew, and so you would build the ramp together. You would skate the ramp together. You would eat around the ramp. You'd all share the the big gulp and the Taco Bell, you know. And like yeah. then, like you'd all skate each other home. It was so innocent and cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like it was awesome. It was like you had like your buddies, and everything was so perfect and cool. And then skateboarding got kind of hard. Like yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was uh, it was a very interesting time. Speaking of OG days, uh, I see you got Rector. Um, I brought something for you guys. How do you have Rector gloves? Because that's my I'm magical. Era. I'm magical. When I first started skating, we saw all the pros wearing. They had either Rector gloves or Sims gloves. Bert Lamar had the bright green okay. Sims gloves, and that was that was the shit. That was like the Oakley grips of of our. I don't know if you know that reference, but <laughs> <laughs> you're not that deep old. cut. Yeah, you're not that old. That's a deep <laughs> cut, but. But that's what you wanted to have. And and my dad was not going to spend whatever it was, 20 bucks or 30 bucks on gloves. So um, I had gardening gloves. The speckled ones? No, the green and yellow ones. Oh, damn. And then the, the, Jank. Fingers, like the-, the fingers would wear through. And then when I go to grab backside airs, the holes in the gloves would get stuck <laughs> on the bolts. Dude. And then I'd be stuck in a backside air coming down the wall. I couldn't let go of my board. I, are, so you, are you talking like the big gloves, like like the dudes catch the eagles in? No, well, they, they look like that, but they're gardening they're, gloves. They're thinner. Yeah. They're gardening gloves. I, mean, I had like, the speckled ones for a little bit. I thought I just thought they looked cool. I don't <laughs> but I they... mean, that just triggers me. Like, oh man, I want you to gloves. have these for me. Yes, they are for you, dude. Really? They're the street. They're the street ones, but they're still in the original package and dude, everything. That's, and yeah, I that means a lot. Can you please you skate in those? I'm not gonna open this. Oh yeah, I got you something too. That's this is from serious? Florida Mushroom King. Yeah, it's like a it's a herbal supplement. It's a trifecta. It has like everything in it. So, you can um, open that. yeah, it's one of my sponsors. Can I? Yeah, but I'm not open. You can do that now. It'll <laughs> probably, it'll probably make, it'll probably get that chocolate down that you hey, took down you. the bottle. This is amazing. No problem, man. This is super. Thank cool. you for everything you do, dude. dude. Thank you for having me too, man. Oh this is, yes, it's our this pleasure. is awesome, dude. The the coolest thing is I reached out to you, and I I didn't realize you, that you were in Florida full time. Um, and then. You know, you're like, yeah, I would love to come on. I go, we're gonna record these days. You're cool. I'm flying out. Like flying out. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. 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 From Florida. Yeah. Yeah. This. yeah. Oh hell yeah. 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 Well, you're not yeah it's Hawks versus Wolf. It's a <laughs> yeah. huge show. Exactly. I call <laughs> Tony hey, Hawks on it. I, guess I, I call. I call. My, I call my mom and told her I was like, Tony Hawk just hit me up and told me to come on the show. And she, she was like, Tony Hawk. And I was like, Whoa, you know who Tony Hawk is? <laughs> yeah. I was. I was she like, didn't even know where Prague is. Yeah, I was, she, she didn't know, know Tony. I was like, Whoa, whoa. You know, she's like, Yeah, I know Tony Hawk, boy. And I was like, Whoa. 
what? She's like, then she hit me up yesterday. She's like, where can I watch it? I'm like, it's not on yet. So she's a huge fan of yours. Oh, man, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome, man. But um, we, yeah. we are honored you came right now. Yeah, like I said, she's going to love this episode. You kicked ass. I love thank your you. content. I love your that you have a, such a deep history with skating and such a respect for it and a reverence for it. Thank you. Like that it, you know, it truly shaped who you are. And, and you were, I mean, you were such an icon of what we were doing in the underground days. Yes. You know, um, and it was very underground. You know, yeah. it was, um, I appreciate that, you know, and it's, it's awesome. It's, it's awesome to be from that era. And it's cool that I'm able to share that insight with people too. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I feel it's the least I can do for skating for what it's done for me. And, and also a lot of those guys are my heroes, man. Like all oh, you guys, you guys are like my heroes. So it's like, it's, it's good to be. I able love to you have Ray Barbie on your podcast. We, we're hoping to get him on here, but I got his phone number. You want I give I'm it to you? Right yeah, I do. Yeah. I'll literally give I it do. to you right now. I'm not joking. <laughs> he and I, he and I did the first demo in South Africa together. Really? Yeah. Dude, he it was wild. He talked to me for three hours, and it was like it was like my it was like my dad who wasn't there talking to me. I was very attentive. I did not cuss because I know Ray Barbie goes to church. It it, it hurt me to not cuss for three hours. <laughs> I was just like. Damn, it's Ray Barbie. I'm just like, I want to say, but he was so awesome, man. And um, just took me through his whole life, dude. Yeah. Like, it was like, I, and I idolized Ray Barbie growing up. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was, it was awesome to talk to him, number one, and just to have him share his story with me was remarkable. You know, yeah. it's like things I didn't know. And he told me, you know, the, the origins behind the, the no complies and what it's really called and who really came up with it. And, that kind of stuff's important. You know, I think it's very important because it gets mixed up a lot. You know, like 10 years from now, like, I love Stevie, but you don't want someone to be like, Stevie Williams made up the no comply. You're like, dude, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. You know, so it's important to have these kind of history lessons and things go on. And like I said, it's it's a it's a lane that no one's really messing with. Yeah. And and I like doing it. Yeah, you know, I, you. I, a lot of those guys, they, they enjoy it. You know, a lot of those guys have never really had the yeah. interviews. I saw your, your uh, episode with Darren Cookie too. That was good. Yeah, that was that was really. He was walking around. Um, <laughs> he was walking around a flea market, and he bought a uh, yeah. Police Academy Four video. And he's like, "Man, he's like, should I get it?" And I was like, "I was like, dude, I was like, I was like, buy it and have Tony and everyone sign it, and then resell it." He's like, "That's a great idea." He's like, two bucks." Like so. <laughs> 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 yeah, he was great. Um, I don't know, man. I've had some. I had Bill Danforth on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. It was. It was. And I'm like, That's right. Yeah, dude, I was talking to him for a while. He lives near me now. He lives in Deland. Oh, he does. Yeah, Last funny time still pushes was... Mungo, huh? Funny story about Bill Danforth. Bill Danforth, um, Dave Duran is a good friend of mine. He lives in uh, he lives in Deland, and so Bill Danforth moves there, and Dave Duran comes up on him he's like, "Oh man, Bill Danforth, you? Hey man, my name's Dave. Welcome to Deland." And I guess Bill Danforth's like, "Get the fuck out of my face!" <laughs> He does not know who Bill Danforth is. That's on, like, <laughs> that's on, that's on brand. Yeah. Like, I was like, you know what? That guy, man. he hasn't missed a step, but yeah. he's a really nice guy. Keeping it real. I've Holy had Grant cow. on there. You know, I've had some I've had some really cool guests and some special. My first guest was Ron Allen, and um, and I didn't know anything oh, about podcasts. Airwalk, Airwalk board slides. Right? Yeah. I didn't knew nothing about podcasts, so I was like, you know what? Um, so I tried to interview him on Zoom, and so I go to some, like, Beach areas, just you know, I'm, this is awesome. Sitting in my ex girlfriend's car, interview for three hours. Getting done with the interview, I go to drive off. I'm so happy. Fucking didn't record it. Yeah, I was gonna say, how did you record it? I Welcome did, to I the did game. Not, I didn't. I did not. <laughs> I was like, dude, you gotta be kidding. So it took three days for me to call him back and be like, hey man, I'm so sorry. I got yeah. this. And he's like, dude, let's just run it back. Yeah. And so he yeah. did it again. And then the next time he wrapped at the end. Yeah. That dude's a showman. Yeah. You yeah. see that clip of him at uh, Tampa? She, with with Mike V rapping? What's that? No, no, no. The uh what did he do? He did something like late flip? Oh yeah, pop shove a late flip. Pop shove a late flip. Like he's 60, right? Yeah, dude. I, did you see the clip of him Is that and Ryan? Right? I, 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 I know that's a trick he did. I don't know. I thought you were talking about him rapping and then Mike Mike V. No, coming sorry, on... I was off on a tangent. I'm, no, I'm no, just, no, no, I no. was admiring Ron skating. No, no, but Mike, but I thought you were talking about him mm. rapping because he was rapping at that kind. He had a rap show. Oh, he did. He skated the contest into a rap show that night, and then Mike V jumps on stage and starts rapping with him. And shit Mike got, V rap. Shit got weird. <laughs> weird and shit got weird real quick. Like he was like he rapped. He rapped. He rapped. Rapped. Like it was very uncomfortable. Yeah. 
How about that? It that was, was, that yeah. was a professional way to say that. that was, yeah. yeah. I, I know exactly what to say You're about Mike B. You're a professional broadcaster, yeah. Thank Clyde. You. Well right, done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank I'm, you, Clyde. I'm not getting my ass beat by Mike B. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's not getting my clothes dirty. Yeah, it's not Mike worth B. it. Yeah. <laughs> Uncomfortable. Um, well, well said. We'll, we'll cut it there before we get in more trouble. Okay. Thanks, Clyde. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on, man. Um, It's a pleasure, man. Thank you, guys. It's good to see you, too, man. Good to see you, man. I ain't seen you in a while. I'm you ever nail hey, I got a question for you. Did you yeah. nail that kick foot 540? Yeah, whatever. That about? was your thing. That was your did you nail that? No. Damn it. Yeah. That was hey, that was your radio. time. Hey, I got into time. radio. I might do it again, though. I might try again. You should do. That was your thing. I always I always remember seeing you try the contest. It was my thing, right? That was your thing. If right? I'd have made it, it would have been the best one of its kind. Right. <laughs> it would have been. Because right. no it one would have been. No one was doing it like that. It yeah. looked like it looked You know like why it, they weren't doing it like that? Because they were making it. It looked like you were. It looked like you were falling, and it was like, "Holy shit, he's spinning!" Yeah. Like it was seriously awesome. I was like, I was telling no, Lance, yeah, but they're all going to body real. You, you were doing legit. Yeah, thank you, yes. thank you, Tony. Yeah. yeah. Body is, is there a difference, really quick, between a? There's a difference between a McTwist and 540, right? You, you kind of do a. If you want to get really critical, yeah. There's a 540 where you flat spin, okay. and a McTwist is where you flip. Thank but you. but the McTwist is that specific grab too, so you got to kind of flip it and grab it right there. It's got to be. Can you guys so. do a uh, Clyde Alario? What's, What's that? that? I don't know. It's just a name. Oh man, I thought it was going to be a thing. <laughs> this guy. Will oh, do you it. asked like let's make one up. No, I was going to do a, a a Clyde Alario board with Cab's old graphic, and it was going to have a llama oh, instead. Of <laughs> oh wow! He would yeah. have loved that. Uh, yeah, I know. He, that's why I didn't do it. <laughs> if, I, if I can get to any new cab variation, I'll, I'll call it the Clyde Alario. Well, he did something with Alf, and that's cool. I liked your thing with Alf too. That was really cool. Oh, he's, we're going to do that one again. Oh, are you? Yeah. That's sick. I like his boards. Ha soy. Yeah. Oh, hawk Ooh, soy. Yeah. Ha sick. Soy. His boards look like like old cars. Like they're like. I know, they like, man. He's he's a he's a talent. They like pop off. You know he's what I mean? Talented. Very yeah. talented guy. But um, yeah, man. Thank he's you guys. Artiste. I want to say thank you. I know we're running on time. I want to say thank you guys so much, man. Dude, thank you. And check out WCRP. And uh, cooking with Clyde, WCRP. You can Clyde. catch it on. I want off. a shirt. I, I don't know if I can go to Papa, but I want a shirt. I'll let you know. I hit you up. Right. Um, I'm, I got a cooking with Clyde, Sean Clyber shirt. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Super stoked on that. That's what I'm um, talking about. Yeah, podcast, Save cooking. One. Size large. I got you. All right. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Well, I can Thanks describe. <laughs>